Rick Haro, Power Sports, Miami Dolphin game before the Tennessee Titans. Tom Garfinkel, President and CEO of the Dolphins. You get here very early in the morning. You run around and make sure everything's great. You don't control how the team plays on the field, but you'll take credit for it when it does do well, right? That's part of the deal? No, I don't, I don't get credit. and uh, I get a lot of the blame, actually, but I don't get the credit. But, yeah, no, but it's, uh, it's not something under my control. It's up to those players once they get out there. Very well done. Part of the job description, though, is that basically you run this empire. This, you run the business, and it includes the stadium. It includes the Dolphins. It includes relations back to the NFL. So describe, kind of describe your, your job description, if it's possible. Well, people ask me, what do you, what do, you do, actually? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I say, well, I, I probably make about 100 decisions a day. So, right. so that's really what it's about. But, uh, you know, we've got a great team of people here all working together, and, and uh, you know, that's the key to everything. No, no one person can do anything. So my role is really to, to facilitate that teamwork and get everybody working together and, and uh, towards trying to be the best organization we can be. And before we get into the reason we're here, the charitable component, which is uh, an industry leader, the Dolphins Cancer Challenge, You've been uh, Michigan sports, Michigan trained, NASCAR, Padres. You've been involved in running and being involved in a lot of different sports. The diversity of those organizations makes you stronger as you took it into this one? Well, I've been very fortunate to, to, to work in different in industries, and I've had uh, a lot of great mentors along the way to learn from. And so try to try to take something away from, from all those experiences. And I, I've always had a... Uh, a personal and professional philosophy of always be learning. So as long as I'm learning and getting better every day, then, uh, uh, you know, things will work out. And as an organization, we want to have an organization of continuous improvement and learning because if you're always getting better, eventually you're going to get there. Is there a way to compare and contrast? Or are there big similarities and differences? you got NASCAR, you got baseball, you got football, just for three. Well, they're all very different. Um, there's things that, that, that are similar. So I think, you know, in my role, uh, for example, being the – you know, the president of a baseball team or, or an NFL team, there's a lot of similarities in terms of, you know, what you do working with an owner, working with the media, building a great team of people, sponsorship, ticket sales, fan engagement, stadium, all those things working with the league office are very similar. Obviously, the business model from a, from a player and economic standpoint is different. Uh, with the salary cap in the NFL and some of the things that go on there. I think uh, the culture is different, you know, in terms of the football culture versus baseball. And then certainly uh, having 10 games instead of 81 home games is, is, is quite a big difference as well. But uh, at, at the core, you know, the, the, the main things are very similar, which is leading change, managing people, um, and, uh, and, you know, brand strategy people, whether you're, uh, you know, I guess, you know, we're selling uh, computers or – or insurance, or whether you're working for a working for a football team. Let's talk about the philosophical underpinnings of the brand. Your your view of of running a sports franchise in general, an NFL franchise in specific, the Dolphins franchise in very specific. Protection of a public trust, uh, an obligation to give back to the community. Talk about all of that. <laughs> yeah, well, I do think that that there's things about sports business that are different than traditional business. I think that uh, uh, you know. PR is a different animal. It's probably more like Washington, D.C. than it is like Wall Street. Um, but I think, you know, we do have an obligation to give back to the community. I tell every owner I've ever worked for, and Stephen Ross, our owner, I almost didn't have to tell because he got it yeah. before I got here, but it's sort of like you don't own the team. You know, if the team is, is really owned by the fans. It's a public trust. It was here before we got here. It'll be here after we're gone, hopefully a long time from now. But uh, uh, the fans own the team. The community owns the team. And, and it's our responsibility to be good stewards of the team. And and that means proactively using this as a platform to help in the community, and I, I think Stephen exemplifies that as well as any owner I've ever seen. Well, it's a beautiful way to segue into the Dolphins Cancer Challenge. It's one of the primary initiatives of the Dolphins Foundation. Uh, it predates you slightly as far as getting here, but it's also been a very important part of your mm -hmm. life. W why is this cause important to you? Well, it's personal. I think cancer is something that, uh, you know, affects everybody, yeah. Rick. And uh, I, don't, I don't know very many people that haven't been affected one way or the other in their life. And so, uh, you know, this initiative when I got here was I, was I was blown away by how much community support there was, how much money was being raised yeah. at that time, $3 million the first year I was here. Uh, we raised $6 million this past year and have a goal to be well over seven uh, this coming year. Uh, a hundred percent of the proceeds go to Sylvester Cancer Center. And the goal is to to make Sylvester Cancer Center at the University of Miami a NCI, National Cancer Institute recognized facility of which 
there's only, I think, 40 or so in the country. So, um, and that'll help people, you know, it, it, Sylvester is prolonging lives, saving lives, uh, and, and that money goes to research to do that, and uh, we're really proud of what we're doing. National show, many people in the South Florida region understand the face of Jim Mandich and what this charity looks mm -hmm. like here, but I explain the kind of special significance to a national audience. Well, it's special for a lot of reasons. I mean, we've had, uh, you know, obviously a lot of people here at the Dolphins impacted. Uh, Jim Mandich, you know, when, when the thing started uh, uh, being most prominent. But certainly even just this past year, we had a, a ticket sales uh, represent, representative leader in our ticket sales department named Joel Adams, a young man in his late 20s, uh, went in, was feeling something in his head, and, and he lost some hearing, and turned out he had a grapefruit-sized brain tumor in his head. Uh, he went in, found out it was benign. Uh, but when they did the CAT scan, they found a mass in his chest, unrelated, uh, that was cancer. And so, uh, you know, for him to be able to have this incredible bad luck, I guess you yeah. could call it, but he's come out of it well, and uh, uh, he's healthy now, thankfully, and cancer-free. And uh, But these types of things, you know, we've had just numerous people in our organization affected by cancer. So I think it's very personal for people. And the University of Miami and the Sylvester Cancer Center do a fantastic job, and uh, we're proud to be associated with them. Started as a cycling event, now it's so much more. Talk a little bit about the implementation. What do you do to raise the money? Well, so we have uh, uh, fundraising participants, uh, whether, they are, whether they're cycling, whether they're doing a 5K, yeah. whether they're just volunteering, whether uh, we now have a concert. We end, we end the event with a concert. We have five rides from... Uh, over 100 miles to the, the, the shortest ride is 13. It's not a race. Anybody can get out there on their bike and just ride 13 miles. It's really about raising money to fight cancer, and uh, uh, it, it, it's just grown tremendously. We get a lot of corporate support from companies like Lennar Homes and, and AutoNation and others that uh, support us a great deal. So the sponsorship covers the costs of the event and the things that we do, and 100% of those funds that are raised by, uh, by people in the community uh, go to Sylvester. That's one important distinction. The other one, obviously, is the kind of research. This is innovative research. This is international research. Talk about that for a minute. It is. Well, Dr. Steven Neimer, who, who runs the uh, Sylvester Cancer Center, came from Sloan Kettering and is one of the, one of the prominent cancer researchers in the country. And, and uh, uh, you know, I think talking to him and seeing what they're doing over there when I go over there and meet with them, uh, uh, they're doing some really leading, cutting-edge things, and and, the, and you know, as, as Stephen says, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. It's it's, uh, you know, when you talk to people whose lives have been saved, uh, talk to people whose lives have been prolonged much longer than expected because of, uh, uh, you know, trial medications, things that they're learning, what they're doing with genomics. This money is going to things, technology, and things to help customize treatment for the individual in these cases, and and it's making a big difference. Even for this show, dollars are figures are mind-numbing, and one of the things we're trying to do is to, to, to bring it home, make, make people understand. Twenty-two and a half million has been raised, at least published, for cancer research through this program. Um, can that amount make a big difference in fighting cancer? Have you seen an impact? It really can. Uh, you know, it's a better question for the folks at Sylvester, but when we talk to them, it, it, it is uh, paramount to their ability to, uh, to continue and grow their research <clears throat> in an innovative fashion to make sure that uh, it's continuing to grow at the pace that it needs to grow at. So uh, fortunately, we've, again, we've been raising that amount every year from, you know, uh, I think the first year was a half a million dollars. And, uh, you know, again, we were over $6 million this year, and, and we plan to keep, keep raising that number. But uh, uh, the more we can raise, uh, the, the more we can fight cancer. Great cause. Segue back just for a few minutes. Generally, NFL, you're one of 32 chief executives in a fairly exclusive club. Do you like the direction the NFL is going in? Yeah, the NFL, you know, when you get to be, one of the things I, I, I realized when I first got here, having worked in auto racing and baseball, and uh, I think the first NFL draft uh, that I went to in 2014 uh, the TV ratings for the NFL draft that day were five times the NBA playoffs with LeBron James playing in, in, in the game. And, and that kind of blew me away. You think about the, the size and the scope and the scale. And you know, this is the NBA, which is this amazing, wonderful league with these great players and all that. And the draft uh, pulled these incredible TV ratings. So I think, you know, the NFL, um, 
is, is working hard on things like engaging the community, is working hard on player safety um, uh, and impacting people's lives in a positive way. And, and uh, you know, I'm proud of that. I love the game of football. Uh, football really influenced my life. Playing high school football uh, taught me character, taught me work ethic. What position did you play? I played quarterback. You did, really? And, were, you, uh, were you quick enough? Did you? Uh, were you no, good? I was a slow-footed, weak-armed quarterback. That's right. <laughs> it's like you know. But by the way, yeah. the best, the best managers, best executives are the ones that weren't very good. I mean, you know that. Yeah, I was the first to practice, the last. I tell my kids, <laughs> be the first to show up, the last to leave. Listen to your coaches. Be a good teammate. You know, and but it teaches you those yeah. things. It teaches you teamwork. It teaches you yeah. mental and physical toughness, competitiveness, all those things, and. Uh, I tell people football had as much to do with who I am today as, as anything really probably besides my parents. Micromanage back to the Dolphins. And this is from a guy who spent a lot of years in his life trying to generate as much public money as possible. Steve Ross and you did an incredible thing. You basically write a check for a $400 million renovation of a building that will create a economic impact way beyond just one season or not get a Super Bowl. Talk, talk about that a little bit, generally. Well, I'd like to take some credit for that, but the $500 million... Sorry, was, was, I missed the $100 million. I <laughs> was, apologize. ...with Stephen's money, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, Steve is incredible, and that goes back to his stewardship. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, you look at a situation where, you know, he puts in $500 million of, of private money to ensure that the team was going to be here for the next 30 years plus to provide this world-class facility that now we bring in the Classico with Real Madrid Barcelona, or we bring in the U2 and Coldplay concerts, or we now have the Super Bowl coming in 2020. Um, and then obviously for the University of Miami Hurricane fans, for, for Dolphins fans, uh, they now have a world-class facility to come, come enjoy. So uh, I'm proud to be associated with it. I'm, I'm happy to work with somebody like Steven who, who is an innovator, who thinks big, who takes big risks, and isn't afraid to do things differently, and, uh, and I enjoy that personally. That's kind of my philosophy on things, too, is to always be trying to get better and try new things, and, and uh, it's fun to work for someone who embraces that. Pay homage to the branding and legacy of the franchise, but now you're, we're not done because this is a ticket for the first Miami Dolphin game in 1966. I've been at almost every, still have tickets. So what have you done for us lately? And the bottom line is, are we bothered, are you bothered by all of us 1972 perfect season legacy? What have you done for us lately, guys? Oh, I'm not bothered by that at all. I, I, that, I'm honored by that. Yeah. Um, right. That's, you know, I think that, uh, you know, I say that uh, I'll, take, I'll take anger over apathy any day. And, and we, I don't experience a lot of anger from our fans. This fan base is incredibly resilient, incredibly uh, loyal and... Uh, and, and I don't just say that lightly. They really are. Um, and it's, it's, it's an amazing fan base. We, we go on the road and there's a thousand people yeah. at these games, at these other games or more, uh, cheering on the Dolphins. The players notice it. Um, and so we're, we're working hard on, obviously, the team with Coach Gase. And, and, uh, and here at the stadium with the $500 million renovation, yeah. I think every part of the end-to-end -end experience from driving in to the concessions we just added ob house from fort lauderdale to the best breakfast food around we've added los ranchos to have authentic uh, uh miami food here as well and so from the concessions to the parking to the bathrooms to the everything here has been upgraded and, and uh I, I think it's a great experience and we, we continue to try to make it better and tom garfinkel will segue from the old Orange Bowl to the perfect season to the old Joe Robbie Stadium to the $500 million and doing it well. So I guess finally on that issue, do, do people realize now that it's three generations removed, the compelling nature of that perfect season brand? Every year, it's less and less time before there's no perfect team anymore. This year is only three weeks. And so, you know, what, yeah. what, does, it, what does it mean to have, have that kind of brand and that kind of record? Well, this is the 45th year, and I think that... Uh uh, you know, one of, one of the real privileges, there's a lot of privileges of having this job, one of the real privileges has been getting to know the alumni players, Coach Shula, not just from 72, but all of them, and Nat Moore, who runs that for us, does a fantastic job, but, you know, the Larry Zonka, we had Larry Zonka, Larry Little, Bob Greasy in London, and we had a dinner, and Dan Marino, Nat Moore was there, Kim Bo Camper, Jimmy Cephalo, Joe Rose, at a, a sponsored dinner. And the stories that were getting thrown around, the, the humor, the, the love of these guys when you're in the room with them, it's really a special group of men uh, who achieved a special thing. But uh, uh, these Dolphins players, I think we have something really special with the alumni we have here and how, how attached they are to the organization, how much they care, uh, and the legacy of that 1972 team uh, continues to live on. 
the brand is important, the legacy important is obviously the current charitable work preeminent and a standard around the NFL. Tom Garfinkel, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank you.